Hey guys, welcome back. So you can tell by the way I'm dressed what we're about to do. Today, we're gonna to do one of the most requested handguns I've gotten, and yes, I've gotten a lot of requests for different guns. Guys, I can only get to them so fast. We've had kind of a slow start this season, and we're rapidly approaching winter, which means we won't be able to do the tests until spring. But a lot of you guys ask, ask me why I don't do revolvers. I'm going to address that, and we've actually picked up a police trade-in revolver, a Smith & Wesson. We got it dirt, dirt cheap so I don't mind if I actually blow that gun up, but that's why we've not done revolvers, is because revolvers, you can pack this sand, dirt, and mud into the cylinder directly on top of the bullet, and the bullet has to push that material all the way down the barrel. One of two things is gonna happen. It's gonna score that barrel, it's gonna ring the barrel, or it's just gonna burst. So that's why we haven't done revolvers in the past, but we will do one to show you guys what could happen or what may not happen at all. So today's video is about the H&K USP 45 one of the most requested handguns. I've done two CZs and some of you guys are giving me a hard time about not doing my carry gun. This PO7 is almost identical except with the polymer frame to my carry gun, but I will do a PO1. I just don't wanna do five CZ videos, okay? So the HK is definitely one of the most requested handguns and that's what we're gonna to do today. This one is in 45 ACP. We will be using some Federal 45 ammunition, 230 grain ball. We're gonna start off the testing by firing 10 rounds just to confirm function of the gun. Then we're gonna go through what I call the elemental test. Water, fire, sand, fire, wash, dirt, fire, wash, mud, fire, okay? So we cleanse the gun off between every cycle of these various elements to see how it does with each element mixed in with a little bit of water. If the gun passes that with no major malfunctions, then we'll go to what we call the gauntlet. We'll go to the water, fire, sand, fire, dirt, fire, mud, fire, and see what it takes to kill the pistol. My personal opinion is most handguns should be able to pass the gauntlet. I mean, not the gauntlet, I'm sorry, the, what I call the elementals test, the first test, washing it off each time in between water. We have the gun loaded with a full magazine. We have a round chamber. The gun is as sealed up as it can be, and it's just being laid in the various elements. I believe any gun should be able to handle that with a minimal number of failures, and if it does have a failure, it should just be a simple matter of running the slide and returning it back to normal function. Okay, you guys take this however you want. This is primarily for entertainment purposes. This is not scientific. This is mostly done for entertainment, but there are some data points here some of you may find valuable. I certainly do. All right, let's do the, the confirmation of function fire first. And we're gonna fire 10 rounds. All right, gun works just fine. I have to load that magazine back up because I only have four magazines for this HK USP 45. All right. And then we're gonna get down to the meat and potatoes. Here we go, guys. Two more rounds. The gun has been cleaned, okay? So it's clean, freshly lubricated. I'm gonna drop the hammer. So this is how I would carry the gun, hammer down on a live round in the chamber. I put the gun in the water and we, we keep it there until the bubbles stop coming out. As soon as they stop coming out, we pull the gun up and immediately fire it. All right, perfect function. Now we go over to the sand, decock it. I push it down in the sand on one side and then I push it down on the other side. Now the moisture is gonna cause the sand to glob on just a little bit and I fire 10 rounds. Perfect function. Let's go ahead and rinse the gun off. Make sure she's nice and clean. And now we go over to dirt, decock the pistol, push it down into the dirt. And again on the other side. All right. And then we fire two more rounds. And she locks open. Clean it off. And the last one is the mud. Make sure we look good. Okay, doesn't feel gritty at all. Getting a little bit slow and sluggish on the slide there. Now we push it down into the mud on one side, and then we push it down on the other, and fire 10 rounds. Perfect function, I would expect no less from the go to war handguns from H&K, their hammer-fired series. 
So it passed the elemental test without even the slightest hint of a malfunction. Now all we do is clean the gun off in its own dirty water, and we reset the test by reloading the magazines. Then we go from water to sand to dirt to mud. That's where it gets interesting. Let's load up the magazines and I'll be right back. We're not gonna clean the gun. So the HK USP45 performed flawlessly in our elements test. Let's see what it has to say about the gauntlet. All right, guys, again, water, sand, dirt, and mud straight through. We don't stop to rinse in between. We're still using the Federal 230 grain ball. Decock, a little bit muddy water this time, and fire. straight to sand, be cock. We do things a little bit differently. We throw some sand up over it. We're trying to make it a little bit harder. We are trying to cause the gun to choke now. All right, and then fire. Ah, out of battery. Way out of battery. I can't seem to get it to go home. Can't seem to clear it. My hands are wet. That makes it kind of difficult. Hmm. All right, let's try to, okay, I just ha hammered that slide home. Okay, so all that happened is a little bit of sand probably got in there and I had to pound it home. I couldn't pull it back, my hands were slipping off. Pounded it home, but it did not hiccup. It, well, it did, it didn't go completely into battery and I had to, uh, had to assist it a little bit. So that'll actually count as a failure, unfortunately. Push it down, put some dirt up over it. Other side, push it down, push some dirt up over it, and fire. I cannot pull the trigger hard enough. So you get dirt back in here behind the hammer, and uh, I really had to squeeze that trigger hard, guys, but it fired, all right? Last test, mud. I won't count that as a failure. Um, it cleared itself out, but I really had to squeeze as hard as I could. Push it down in the mud, bring it up over the gun. We may run into the same hammer problem here because this stuff is sticky. All right. <laughs> yeah. I am a big kid. Wipe some of this off. Get a little bit less on my face, clear a finger hole there. You can see it's behind the hammer. A little bit behind the trigger. All right, here we go. <laughs> and it locks open, guys. What a great performance from the HK45. That's actually pretty impressive. So we had one time where we had to push that slide home, push past the grit, and then it fired, kind of a half failure. Then we had uh, the mud once again, or the dirt, it, I had to squeeze that trigger as hard as I could and I finally pulled it hard enough where that hammer fell and it fired. So each time it was cycling, it was just dealing with those elements. So um, yeah, that's actually pretty darn good performance, but keep in mind guys, this, this hammer rides inside of a very narrow covered well. So it can't push the stuff out to the side as readily as some other double action designs because that hammer goes so deep into that that slide, and I think that was part of its problem. But once that hammer fired, man, the gun just kept going. So uh, yeah, let's clean her up a little bit, think about it, and give you some final thoughts. So we just started doing this this year, and that's cleaning the guns off with the garden hose, seeing if we can return them to normal function, although the HK seemed to be functioning pretty darn good without doing this, but we're gonna go ahead and hose the gun off. Guys, this isn't my house, and if this is poison ivy, I don't care, I'm not allergic to it. You guys always comment on that, and I think it's probably kind of funny. Clean up your house, Mac, it ain't my house. I don't have a range at my house, unfortunately. All right, so let's get this sucker as cleaned off as we can, then we'll run over and shoot it some more and see if just giving it a bath keeps it running. Some guns just do not like to work in the absence of lubrication. All right, we take this completely apart here. Kind of an interesting task to do when your hands are wet. 
The gun doesn't look all that dirty on the inside. Looks pretty good. Rinse it all out. Might as well get the barrel too. Rinse off anything that might be in there. Looks pretty clean to me. All right. These big old HKs, man, they are frickin' tanks. What'd I miss? All right. Get this thing put back together. These are big handguns, but they are definitely go-to-war type handguns. All right. A decocker. A decocker's just barely working. I'm going to really have to take this thing apart to clean it. All right. Rinse off these mags real quick. They shouldn't be too bad. All right, let's go load up the magazines now and see how well this gun performs. Seems like it's got a little bit of gunk in the action. The decocker is a little hard to use. I bet you it works though. I'm kind of betting on that. All right, guys, fresh out of the garden hose. Let's see how well the HK performs. And locks open, magazine falls free. I fully expect this gun to continue functioning. Yep, she's not gonna choke. What a tank. And one last magazine, I think we've proved our point. This gun's silly reliable. And that's it. Well, guys, all right. I've had time to think about this. The cocker's a little bit gunked up. Not surprising. Probably has some sand inside of it. I'm going to have to thoroughly clean this gun when I get it back. How did it fare? Extremely well, guys. This gun did extremely well. The few hiccups that it had were cured simply by me whacking the rear of the slide or pulling the trigger a little bit harder. Well, in case one instance anyway, a, a lot harder. But the gun cycled every single time and fired. Now, technically, it, it had a couple of hiccups with the failures to go into battery. Uh, one failure, the rest, I have to watch the video, may have just been me having to pull the trigger harder. I don't care how you slice it, in my opinion, the gun did extremely well. One of the best performers in the series so far. Now, this is also the first 45 that we've fired in the series. Gun has considerably more recoil. Um, the hammer, you know, it's a positive and a negative. We seem to have pretty good luck with the hammer-fired guns in these tests. But this isn't the first time that crud has accumulated back here, making it hard for the hammer to get a full draw before release, especially when firing double action that first shot. Overall, would I trust my life to this gun? Absolutely. frickin uh, The 45 USP is definitely a go-to-war gun. It's been <laughs> tested by the US military and many others. Um, yeah, it's a tank, it's big. I think the 45 chambering definitely helps with its reliability. There's considerably more recoil than there is with nine millimeter. And overall, just a really cool gun. It worked really, really well. All right, guys, if you enjoy seeing these types of tests, if you would like to support us directly at the Military Arms Channel, which is important, it does help us quite a bit if you go by and check out our patron page. Patron, you can directly support the channel and other channels, other creators that you regularly consume their content. Uh, patron allows you to uh, subscribe to the channel and in return we give you fresh content behind the scenes information blog posts direct access access to me i answer all emails and pms and questions we also do giveaways we're getting ready to do our first of the month ammunition giveaway we do other giveaways things from videos that we shoot stuff like that so we try to give back to the community that supports us but again don't just support the military arms channel guys seek out and find your other favorite content creators on patreon and please support them as well also, please get in the fight and join the NRA. Use the link down below. That link is a special link that brings me money. That money goes directly 100% to Hero Hunt, which is a 503 nonprofit organization that helps our nation's wounded warriors and first responders. It gets them back into life and doing good things, and they're great people. I've gone into the field with them before. And guys, please swing by and check out Copper Custom. It's coppercustom.com. It's our online store. You can check out some great products at great prices. And that's another way to support the channel. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for all those years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon.